Hey booze, in this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I didn't think for you to be proud of him. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. I almost forgot about this video. I almost forgot. So I had to come back on here. I had to run and pick up my dress. For my birthday. My birthday is this Saturday. So I decided to come back and do this reaction. Shout out to the Aries that are out here. It's our birthday. It's our officially like our time, our moment. So I'm just running around getting some things done. And so I decided to come back and do this. So I watched, I watched the interview that Clay did. And honestly, let's just watch. Let's just get into it. Let me not even waste your time, girl. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed because I don't think they really asked questions that really got what we were looking for, but let's just listen. So, um, I mean, clearly I've been watching the show the whole entire season. You and AD and I have said this on the air with my favorite couple mm -hmm. for a period of time until you guys uncoupled. Um, at the end, unexpectedly, because I think watching that scene, a lot of people were like, oh, jaw on the floor. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, I was watching it too. I thought I was going to say yes, watching it. Facts. So, you did? Yeah, I was like watching it back. I'm like, dang, I was giving like a lot of indication I was going to say yes, but... Uh... You know, I knew what exactly exactly happened, but yeah. I was like, "Wait, they kind of cut it up a little bit." I was uh, like, "Damn, I'm, I'm about to say yes." Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. It's you, wild. you know, I wanted to say when I was watching it too, and you guys got to the altar, I was like, "This was my first indication, maybe not," because you didn't really prepare your vows. um, yeah, your vows. Yeah. It was kind of you know, some like I'm thinking about like like Candace when you got married, did you have? Your... I I wrote my I waited until the last minute, but mm -hmm. the night before the wedding, I did write out my vows. Did you like? And I know men are different, but did you ever think about like when I get married, I'm gonna either write my vows out or I'm gonna speak from the heart? What was your thought process? I thought it was pretty like as on the show, like my education about marriage was not that high. Like I I had no I would never even think about writing vows even if this decision was going to say yes, because honestly, I was kind of just thinking like, am I going to say yes or no? Mm. So in terms of like thinking about my vows, I was more so thinking about the decision mm -hmm. more so than like, you know what? And again, they they not asking the right questions because, okay, in, in one sentence, he's saying, oh, like I really wasn't prepared for vows and marriage and everything, but you're on a show for marriage. But then he also later says that he never watched Love is Blind. So he didn't know that this particular reality show was, yeah, about love, but he for sure knew that it was about marriage. So, like, I'm confused on, he just didn't seem prepared at all. And it's like, why would you go on a show for marriage if you're not prepared at all? And they never asked him. Angela, ye did not ask him, well, why did you go on a show for marriage if you weren't prepared to even write vows for someone else? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, confess my love, I guess on that uh, altar. And so is that because you were on a show where you have to decide at the altar whether you're gonna say yes or no, or was that because that's your mindset about marriage? You know, I think it's a little combination of both. I think that my mindset on marriage probably wasn't the healthiest going into the show. You know, it was something that like I wanted, mm -hmm. but like I didn't really know how to achieve it. You mm -hmm. know, like I didn't really know mm -hmm. how to like put the work in to like actually be a husband. It was like something that you like, yeah, I want to be a husband, right. but like you really you don't know have how tools. to you have the tools to be a husband. So I think it was a little bit of a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And also with the show, like I would be candid and let you know, like some of the stuff with the show kind of, you know you know, tricked me up a little bit with, is this an actual process where I felt like yeah. this is a foundation where, you know, this is something that's forever. You know, I, I, I kind of struggle with yeah. TV show, real life. This was life. your first time doing a reality this show? This was my okay. first time. And your mm -hmm. mom wanted you to do this. My mom did, but you know, it's funny. She actually was talking about uh, Married at First Sight. She didn't even, she wasn't even talking about Love's Blind. Okay. So she was like, Clay, I think this would be a good show for you. You know, she wanted me to not lean with the physical, kind of more so wow. build an emotional connection, but she was really more so speaking about Marriage at First Sight, not Love's Blind. So mm. she advocated me going mm -hmm. to the show. You know, Clay, looks are important to you. And you talk about that yeah. in the pods. <laughs> yes. And 
attraction is important to you as well. But the whole idea of this show is that you don't know what the other person looks like. Has any of that changed for you? Because people were very critical of the fact that you were focused on like what AB, you were like, I have to make sure I'm going to be attracted to right. you. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like, what do you look like? And she was like, hey, this is not what this show is about. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to being with somebody who physically, because I, I also don't think that's a problem, right? I don't think it's an issue to say I want to be attracted, attracted to because attraction for me might be different than exactly. what somebody else traditionally finds attractive. Yes. Um, but how has that changed for you during this experiment or has it? No, it definitely changed. I think I'm definitely able to lean more with the emotional side. And I think I'm definitely more emotionally intelligent than I was when I first did the show. Mm -hmm. But I will say that what you guys saw was day two of the pods. Like mm -hmm. we had 10 days in the pods. So a lot of the stuff that you guys saw was the first four days. Me and AD were good the last six days. Like we had a lot of powerful conversation. I think that the black community would have loved to hear mm -hmm. that was not aired. You know, I'm big into entrepreneurship. I spoke a lot about, a lot, a lot about that. Mm -hmm. That wasn't aired on the show. But um, in terms of that, I'm big on physical. I am. But like I can say that I'm not so much leading with that. And even then when I date, I'm not dating with like the pleasure perspective it's more so like the purpose perspective as well so so he basically just confirmed that he's really big on pretty girls he just likes pretty girls that's just what i'm getting high like super high maintenance type of girls and that's his preference like that's what he's attracted to we all have our you know different things that we want in a partner when it comes to the physical but it seems like he wants a high maintenance woman so when we get into these finances, he wants a high maintenance woman that puts a lot of effort and energy into her looks. Let's keep that in mind before we continue any further. He wants a high maintenance woman that puts a lot of effort and energy into her looks. I think that's what the show kind of showed me and, and taught me as well. Could you tell AD was black from talking to her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell. We had that thing where it's like, <laughs> you know, it's funny too. Like I was, you know, you know, you, you know, you dating like all these other girls. Like I feel like you know most of the white girls. It was, yeah. it was, it was one date, and then I would, you know, like, oh, I really found the black boys. Yeah, I did. I did date Laura for uh -huh. a while though. Yeah, Laura, she knew what she what you looked like. So I kind of felt like maybe oh, she yeah, because maybe AD had an edge knowing that, that I was black. What well, also mean? knowing kind of what you look like if you dated somebody else on, you know, they could have a conversation. Like, uh -huh. well, I mean, yeah, I mean. You know, me and Laura kind of had like fun banter. I feel like me and AG kind of got yeah. like to the shit, you know? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Too. If you, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. if you were to go back into the pods with this new understanding, would yeah. you do anything different? You know, I feel like, you know, I'm one of them guys, I'm a spiritual guy. I feel like things happen for a reason, mm -hmm, you know, like mm -hmm. the way how I came on, I was unscripted. Mm -hmm. I didn't really watch the show. So mm -hmm. I came from a perspective of the fans are like, yo, is this really real? Right. Like, you can you really fall in love in six weeks? And yeah. I was really like, you know, you know, skeptical mm -hmm. of the process mm -hmm. entirely. So, you know, for me, it did work. I did fall in love with AD in the mm -hmm. pot. So I would do it again because I think it, in terms of it transformed my family, we was able to kind of talk about a little bit of the trauma that we had. Mm -hmm. And I do think that my dating, uh, you know, the way I date is going to be a lot more healthier. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. All right. And uh, so let's talk about. Again, he wants a high maintenance woman. This is why men should stay out of women's business, because I don't think y'all really understand how much effort it takes for a woman to look a certain type of way. You want her to look a certain type of way, but you're not focused on what it actually takes to look that certain type of way. So Clay gives me the type of vibe, if you watch the show, that he wants a high maintenance woman that puts a lot of effort and energy daily into her looks. Y'all really think these women be just waking up? That's why I... I I be seeing some of the stuff online, like uh, when men see certain women without makeup and stuff like that, and they be like, oh, that's what she looked like. And right there and then I can tell you've never dealt with a woman. You've never lived with a woman. You don't even know what it looks like because that's her regular face. Like that's her everyday face. But you only look at women through Instagram filters, through Instagram online stuff, or you only see women at nighttime at the club. You don't see women during the day because you don't like taking women out during the day. So he wants a high maintenance woman that puts a lot of effort into her look. That's all I'm saying. Some women don't want to spend all day. Like I know there are women. It's like clockwork, too. They get their hair done every week. They get their lashes done every month. They get their nails done every two weeks. They don't miss. They have their hair, they make their face done like every day. Not every woman is going to be out here doing that. And, and that's the thing. What is already pretty to men? I don't think y'all know what that looks like. What is already pretty? Y'all certainly don't know what natural beauty looks like. Y'all have no idea what that looks like. 
Um, I just think I don't I just don't think men know how much effort and this is not like in today's society. This has been going on. You can go back to monarch times. Women would have maids to a system on a daily basis when it comes to their beauty and their upkeep. So this is not new. I, I just don't think men actually know what it really takes for women to look a certain way. It, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And one thing I can't stand is when I'm getting ready, don't rush me. Don't, don't do that because now you're stressing me out. Now you're stressing me out. Thank you for the compliments. Thank you for the birthday wishes. Yeah, high, high maintenance and working. That's what he want. He want a high maintenance working woman. Uh, you and AD now, because she's still on your page. She's still, you guys are still friends. Yeah, still friends. But at the reunion, you were saying that you feel like you made a mistake. Yeah. Um, is that something you still are pursuing? I'm not pursuing AD anymore. Uh, you know, she said it on multiple podcasts. I okay. think this week she's super single, and like, I, I support her on that. You know, at the end of the day, me, I'm personally going to therapy. I'm healing. I'm trying. I'm not available right now. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of just working on myself, working on my business and stuff like that. So at the end of the day, all I could do is support AD. And you know, at the end of the day, she wants to be a wife right now, mm -hmm. and I wasn't able to provide that to you know pretty much be her husband. So I, all I'm doing is to support her, and I think you know we have an amazing friendship, and it's amazing that we could kind of go from that and still be friends. So mm -hmm. what were some of those entrepreneurship conversations that you wish we would have? I wish that we would hear a little bit more of my commercial real estate perspective, um, you know, because I'm big. I'm big on that buying land, buying homes. I have two homes right now. So, like, I was talking to her about pretty much like purchasing land. Like, I, I have an autistic brother. I wanted to build a community for kids that have autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to possibly get into the wedding venue space. Uh, I was a, I, I'm in huge entrepreneur classes where I wanted to open up event spaces. Mm -hmm. And AD is in real estate. So mm -hmm. we kind of vibe on that synergy. as well. And, and that synergy and stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of conversations was hap was happening. A lot of our financial conversations happened, you know, off camp. Well, mm -hmm. It was on camera, but mm -hmm. they didn't really they didn't show that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, I noticed that one of the things that people talked about was also when you were talking about AD's finances. Yeah. And that conversation was important for you, and you didn't seem too certain about that as well. Yeah. And so, like you said, you guys didn't have those conversations, but what was it? And I, because I want you to be able to discuss that too, because mm -hmm. finances are an important right. conversation huge, huge, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. can happen if people are planning to get married. Mm -hmm. So, what was it that kind of signaled a red flag for you when it came to her finances? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, for me personally, I wasn't never saying that 80s finances was a reason why we wouldn't be together. I was saying that I didn't understand it enough for us to get married at this time period. Like, I just want to remind everybody, this is six weeks mm -hmm. and I th I'm going to take ownership that I probably should have had a little bit more conversations yes. about the finances, but mm -hmm. I just want to you know remind everyone that there's so much going on at right. that time. Every day is a different theme. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the finances in the pods. What I saw from AD in the pods was a little bit different than what I saw when we were filming, when we were actually in Charlotte together. Uh, she, you know, we, we bobbed off of entrepreneur spirit. We bobbed off of working hard. And then when I felt like when we came back. Now, I just want to stop him right here. Clay seems like the type that wants a, he wants a, he wants a, a power couple dynamic. I think that's what he was expecting from AD. I think he was expecting like some Jay-Z, Beyonce type thing with entrepreneurship. And I think that's what was one of the main things that he was attracted to. And the conversations that they had about entrepreneurship, it wasn't shown, but I think that would give us a bigger perspective on why he felt the way that he felt. It's very similar to, uh, what's her name? B. Simone, when she was like, oh, I don't date a nine to five guy. I want an entrepreneur man, da, da, da. And like, she was dragged for that, but I understood what she meant because you want someone that's, if, they're getting after it when it comes to entrepreneurship, you feel obligated to get after it as well. Like it's kind of like motivational and things, but it seems like he wanted a power couple type of dynamic, but that's what he wants. And there are women out here that want the same thing. They want to be in a power couple relationship. I don't see anything wrong with that. And if that's what AD was selling in the pods and then when she got out the pods and it wasn't giving power couple type stuff, I can see how he probably felt some type of way about that. So you may not want to, you may not want a power couple dynamic. You may not want to build an empire with a man, whatever the case, yada, 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 yada. But that's what he wants. And there are women out here that want the same thing. Back to the house. She dedicated all her time to be a wife and that's cool and everything, but that's not really what I like fell in love with her about, you know, like, she, her biggest thing was like, Clay, I got your back. I'm going to support you. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just not a 
uh, a motivation for me to get married because I have a lot of people that got my back. You know, yeah. I kind of want I want to be motivated by my partner as well. I think it's a partnership and I'm big on marriage. I don't yes. want to get a divorce. And one of the things I know that people get divorces over is finances. finances. So yeah. for me, you know, so yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So like finance is big. So, yes. you know, AD had an ex-boyfriend before she did the experiment. I think it's, she kind of talked about it on a podcast. And for me, I thought that she said she was a real estate agent. I didn't really see her, you know, in that okay. field because she was, you know, dedicated to the process and that, that's good for her. A lot of other people were dedicated to the process as well. But for me, I felt as though for me to say I do, I needed to see, you know, how you, you know, what, what was going on? Like, how are you making your money? Because it seemed to me the ex-boyfriend, this is just to me, this, this, this may not be true. But to me, it seemed like all the finances came from mm -hmm. that ex-boyfriend. So, so he had a club. She worked yeah. at his club. She worked at his also, club. Also, in addition okay. to real estate. That yeah, she, exactly. in, in addition to being a racer. Yeah. Like, like you're saying, like, maybe she wanted to be a stay-at-home wife. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying that. I don't think because AD definitely got into her real estate after we finished filming. And she was very transparent with me about this ex-boyfriend. So I don't want to make it seem like, you know, you know, she wasn't doing anything. Okay. But she just really dedicated. So that debunks the sugar baby thing. Just so you know. In my opinion, it debunks the sugar baby thing. He said he was aware of the ex-boyfriend. Okay. I don't think Clay wants 50-50, but this is my thing, ladies, because we got to keep it all the way real. All women are not going to get a man that's going to pay and fund their whole life. Like that's, del that's delusional for you to think. It depends on the type of men you can pull. That's number one. And it also depends on in real. And I'm I'm saying this from a realistic standpoint, not social media, because I hate social media when it comes to finances and relationships. I just feel like it's a bunch of people talking out the side of their neck. But in reality, they in relationships and marriages where it is 50 50 or in reality, they're in relationships with with men where it's 80 20 or it's uh, 70 30. Because. Statistically, it doesn't make sense. The average man makes about what forty thousand. He doesn't make that much, so I don't know. It's, it's interesting. So my thing is, what is his idea of providing? Because every man has a different uh, perception of what that looks like. If you actually sit down and you talk to men who provide, there are some men you don't have to lift a finger. They don't want you doing anything for yourself financially. Then there are some men. And I'm going to show you this video right here because this one woman, she was just being honest about her situation. And I felt like this was realistic. This was realistic. But let me show you. This is her husband. Let me go back. She said how my husband and I split bills. This is going to be the average American. Well, I don't even know if this is even the average American. I don't know if this is even the average American. Okay. I, I don't feel like it's the average American. I think that this may be above the average American, but I thought that this was a healthy dynamic, even though it wasn't like full on provider, but he's still providing though. So that's what I want to know is what is, what is Clay's idea of providing? Cause everyone has a different understanding of that. And what it seems like is that AD her mindset on providing is providing my whole lifestyle. And then Clay, his thing is, okay, I'll provide, right? But I would like for you to basically maybe be in a dynamic like this one, like this woman is talking about. So she says, how my husband and I split bills. She talks about how she pays for these, for her kids, extracurricular activities. She pays for them 100%. So she has, uh, she pays for all kids' sports activities. We only have one kid in sports right now. Then she said that the mortgage, he pays 100% of the mortgage. She doesn't pay the mortgage at all. And he also pays the house bills. She doesn't pay any of that. Uh, date nights, she doesn't pay for date nights at all. He pays for all date nights. She pays for the babysitter. He pays the car payments and he also pays the car payment insurances. Family vacations, they split 50-50. I think this is the realest I've seen on finances on social media. 
Uh, groceries, 50-50. We both pay for them depending on who goes to the store. Interesting. Subscriptions, he pays uh, for these as a part of the house bills. So any subscriptions that they may have, she doesn't pay for that at all. I know they sound like my parents. <laughs> they sound like my parents too. Partnership. And that's one thing that Clay was saying. He, he expected a partnership. So it seems like this is more of Clay's idea of providing and AD's her idea of providing is a man funding her whole lifestyle. That's why I think it's important for you to have the conversation. If you're dating a man, you might as well go ahead and get that out the way to see, okay, he says he's a provider, but what does he, what is his idea when it comes to providing? What does that actually look like? Uh, she also says that house cleaners and landscapers, she doesn't pay for that. He pays for that hundred percent and he pays for all home maintenance. Okay, so what do y'all think about this dynamic? I think that's it, yeah. What do y'all think about that? Do y'all think that this is still a provider relationship or do y'all think that this is not a provider relationship? One thing that I wished, I, I feel like it sounds realistic too. One thing, I, one thing that I wish Angela Yee would have elab like had him elaborate on was what did he want her financial responsibilities to look like? Because that would have answered all of my questions because that was like the missing key in this entire interview. I'm like, okay, he wanted her to work, but what was he expecting for her to do financially in the relationship? And they didn't talk about it. As a guy, the ex-boyfriend is dude who broke up with her, but still has her on a lease by funding her when she's in between home sales. Listen, that's that's not my business. <laughs> he didn't seem bot Clay didn't seem bothered by her ex at all and how they were tied to each other financially. So that's between AD and uh Clay. And since he didn't elaborate on that at all, because he didn't really go into detail about it, I respect that. Like he's not tripping, he's not mad about it. It is what it is. He didn't seem bothered by it at all. Yeah, I felt like this was I felt like that whole breakdown was very healthy and realistic. But I do sometimes I think uh when it comes to social media, the some of the stuff I be seeing women say, I'm like, are we living in the same e e uh economy out here? Cause if a man was to provide that for me, I would be very much comfortable. I would be very much okay with that. I would be very much what I didn't like was Cardi B's recent. Her whole 50 50 thing, uh uh, uh uh, no, because like she getting cheated on, dogged out, and everything. And you playing and you going 50 50 with your man. <laughs> I did y'all see that with Cardi B, girl? I, let me go ahead and pull it up. I couldn't believe it. I was like, girl, what? <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm not gonna say what I really want to say. I'm not gonna say it. I don't know if y'all saw that, but I thought that was a hot ass mess. Cause I was like, what? Uh, is it this one? I just don't want it to be stitched. She getting cheated on and going 50-50. That's crazy. But you and your man, I feel like it's very controversial when like, be like, oh, I don't go 50-50, but it's like, all right. So if you and your man make the same amount of of money, right? But only your man is the one that paying all the bills. How y'all ever gonna save up to like buy a house or buy a business? Cause he's never gonna be able to afford to. So it's like certain things is like a, a joint thing to do. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, like, it's like a work together. But I just be feeling like sometimes people, like the internet really be having people from like real reality. So it's like, it's like, all right. So your, your mom and dad used to work every single day right mm -hmm. so your mom and dad used to work every single day so your mom could save her money and well buy purses and your dad just pay all the bills that's not how it works this no. is like your mom was in the house cooking and cleaning every day your dad was working or they was both working to to pay both the bills like y'all be right. acting like y'all don't know what it's like no more like come on and your mom money was your was your dad money and your dad money
I feel like it's very controversial when like be like, oh, I don't go 50 50, but it's like, all right. Like I said, the couple that I showed, that's healthy to me. Okay. That is, that is healthy to me. I think that's realistic. The couple that I showed, I think uh, it's achievable for most women. I don't think it's achievable for most women to have their entire life funded. I'm not afraid to say that because it's just me being real. Um, I don't see anything wrong. I don't think a woman should ever be 50-50 because I, I will always see you doing the most. But I don't see anything wrong with 70-30. I don't see anything wrong with 80-20. I think that's realistic. And you have some roots going on within your marriage and your relationship to where this man just can't kick you out the house. You know what I mean? Like, have you out the house like Helen was out the house when, uh, what's that bald-headed man from the angry mad black woman? Yeah, like, so you're not in a, in a position like that. But I just don't like it when I see the woman carrying majority of the load. I feel like the man should always carry the majority of the load. And, and when I mean majority of the load, I mean financially. I also mean when it comes to certain things around the house. I just feel like a man should step up more in those areas because men can take on more. A woman, whenever we try to take on more, uh, it's just really, really, it, it, we struggle. We struggle with our health. We struggle with keeping ourselves up and, and having time to ourselves. So I just feel like to be realistic, it, it, I don't see anything wrong with 30, 70. I don't see anything wrong with 80, 20. I don't think every woman out here is going to get that. Oh, your whole life is being paid for. So I don't know. It's something to think about, but I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm going to try to aim for that 80 20 dynamic. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. I'm gonna try to aim for that. I'm not trying to aim for a man paying and funding my whole life, but 80 20, I can do that. I could do 80 20. And I guess that's just a conversation that you're gonna have to have with the man that you're in a relationship with. But I do. Uh, when it comes to this conversation with Clay, I wish he, I wish he would have went into more detail about, well, this is what I expected from her financially. He didn't really say. this time to be a wife yes me personally I, I didn't understand that because they paid us whatever they paid us and mm -hmm. to me that wasn't enough to just pause my life for six weeks like mm -hmm. it was like regardless if you're making money i i just you know i'm gonna go get it. i just mm -hmm. can't see how you could pause your life for six weeks and not yeah. work you, know, so you had something. different you know? ideals about work I did, I did. I did. Okay. Well, um, Clay, and there was one part where she had like put the, together this dinner, and you didn't show up because you had to work. Yeah, right. Yeah, what yeah. was that about? Yeah, she I didn't set up a dinner. It was like or a, whatever she had set up at the yeah, house. It yeah. was actually really cute, and I want to shout out Ad. It was a probably one of the most thoughtful gifts that. Do you think Ad her expectation was probably more rooted in what her ex did, and that's why I'm like, girl, what 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 happened with the ex? Like, well, how did that not work out? If this man was keep was keeping you in that type of way right what happened with the ex i i i, I wonder why that that relationship just didn't work out maybe because he owns a nightclub you know men who own nightclubs they typically be out here cheating but my thing is uh i i wish i don't know it seems like 80s mindset was oh no i expect for you to pay for everything and then clay is more so i'll provide but like i'm not trying to fund your whole lifestyle it just I don't know. That's what it seems like. And it seems like uh, AD was more more on, oh, I just want to be a stay at home wife. I want to just be a stay at home wife and just cook meals and take care of kids. And that's it. So it doesn't seem like they were on the same page with that. And I think it was just differences in expectations. That's all. And I think this is a great conversation to have. But I just wish we could get past this whole like 50, 50, and then just jumping from 50, 50 to rich. I, I just don't think the average American that's realistic. But like I said, the example that I gave, I felt like that was very healthy, very balanced. And I still feel like a woman is in her feminine energy while still assisting financially, if that makes sense, but not doing it to where she's muling in the relationship. So I felt like that was healthy, but Again, I just wish he would have went a little more into detail about what his expectations were for her financial responsibilities in the marriage.
I, that I ever had. So mm-hmm. pretty much she had like this uh, little cards and it said like the things that she thinks about me. So every day I would pick it up and it's like th- different things you think about me. Like I love the way you smile. Like I love, it was really beautiful. Honestly, mm-hmm. I never had a gift like that. I didn't know that that gift was there. Like I honestly was at the lake working because I rent out boats and jet skis. Right. Uh, also work uh, a nine to five, I'm in tech sales, you mm-hmm. know? So I'm, I'm, on a call, I'm on a call with clients. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. trying to close deals. Mm-hmm. So I was working my nine to five schedule. We were filmed sometimes from six to 10. Mm-hmm. This particular time was a weekend. I was at the lake from nine to seven. I was tired. Like, you know, like you're at the lake all day. The sun is beaming on you. Mm-hmm. I'm pushing mm-hmm. the boat. I'm doing a lot of this by myself. Mm-hmm. So what happened was my jet ski stayed in my garage. I got to my, I got to my house and honestly I just crashed. Mm-hmm. I got to the house. I was at the sun all day. It was a hot day and I just okay. crashed. Mm-hmm. It just it just happens. Like if yeah, we so was, I need to clarify that because yeah. I, right. I just did a it's show up. Like, no, nah, no, nah, it wasn't even wasn't even that. Like <laughs> the, the, where 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 Love is Blind had a station that it was not really convenient to my lifestyle. Okay. Like where okay. my lake where 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 I would have had to drive would have been an hour and a half, like okay. hour and twenty minute drive. Yeah. just to get my jet skis then i had to drive another 40 minutes to go to the lake where i live i'm in the middle of both so like mm-hmm. i could just take my jet skis and drive to the lake it's a 25 mm-hmm. minute ride whereas where they had me at it would have been just too much you know but so i'm i'm on a reality show yeah 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 and we are contracted to be to film from two i okay from a shallow perspective with farm d listed from a shallow perspective you think she can be easily replaceable from a shallow perspective but when you have a quality woman, a quality woman is not easily to replace. I'm I'm sorry. They're not easy to replace like that. But if it's based and rooted off of surface level stuff, then yeah, of course she's easy to replace. But if it's, if it's more than just the surface level stuff, like no, she's not easy to replace. It doesn't matter how much she's contributing financially. Because remember, this is all about her contributing financially. So what we don't know what else this woman was bringing to his life. like, And that's the thing. A woman's value is not tangible. And that's what society today don't seem to understand. Y'all really think a woman's value is what she can give you. It's not. It, her value was never supposed to be tangible to you in that way. Your value to her while you're in your masculine energy was always supposed to be something that she could take, receive from you and multiply. But you were always supposed to give to her so that she could do that. But I don't know. It's like this. Uh, as much as y'all say women are masculine, y'all low key expect for them to be. <laughs> y'all do. Y'all really think that she's supposed to bring something tangible to your life that you can like touch and feel. And it's like, no, she's supposed to inspire you, speak life into you, bring you peace, happiness, uh, maybe pick you up after you had a hard day lighten the mood when it comes to maybe you had a, a bad day at work or something like that but she not supposed to be bringing in a toolbox uh a table a chair like that that you're supposed to provide all of that right and then she's going to make that table feminine pretty you know warm cozy peaceful happy joy i mean that's what it's all about but men it's like y'all really think y'all want a man. Y'all want a masculine woman. Y'all want her to come to your table, take her dildo out, put it on the table because you you expect that from her. And it's just really weird to me. Like, it's really weird. So, no, it, the thing that a woman is supposed to bring, she's supposed to bring her essence. She's supposed to bring her light. She's supposed to bring peace, joy, happiness, health, care, uh, nurture, uh, she's not supposed to be bringing all this other stuff. I don't know why y'all expect it. It's, it's, it's weird, y'all. It's weird. And I, because I don't have a penis, I would have to bring a dildo because I feel like that's what y'all expect. Because I'm not a man. I'm a woman. Tuesday to Saturday. Yeah. When we know that we have to be available at those times. Mm-hmm. Like, did you not know that you would need to be available at that time to film whatever, whether it was her surprising you with a dinner or going to the Ferris wheel? Like, did you not know that you needed to be available at that time? Well, I'm gonna say for me falling asleep, that's totally on me. Like okay. that, that I should have came so home. So you were that supposed night. to go film. No, that was off. That was we weren't filming that time. That was oh, off that was off camera. Okay. She just she just did that off the strength of just okay. her being a good okay. person, honestly. Okay. Uh, so you know, it wasn't like I was supposed to be there filming, yeah. but I just honestly just crashed. Okay. I should have went home yes. and did that. I just honestly just fell asleep. Okay. It, it, it was no mil- yeah. you know, ill will attention with that. But Love is Blind told me that they were going to adjust to my lifestyle. They mm. said that we want Child. to, they, we want to make this, <laughs> we want to make this as, you know, simple as possible. Mm-hmm. We want to make this like, actually like you're going to get married and this is a real relationship. <laughs> I came to find out, 
I got to work on their schedule. And I was like, gotcha. That was, gotcha. That was a little bit <laughs> yep. of an issue. So, uh-huh. you know, I ain't going to uh-huh. say that probably contributed to my edit, but yes. definitely bump, I bump heads a lot yeah. with the scheduling because I wasn't really available all the time. My you husband know? bumps heads <laughs> a lot with the production. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> Have you um, ever lived with somebody before? Never. Never. That was my first time living with someone. Yeah. I'm a uh, solo rider. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this was really like a whole new world. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting dissected. People like judging me and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Like, I'm doing a lot of stuff for the yeah. first time. Like, chill. Like, yeah. chill. Like, yeah. Yeah. Off me. I have a question. I don't know if you can answer this. Right. So I saw somewhere that in your Love is Blind contract mm-hmm. that if you don't show up to the altar, if you don't get married or something like that, you can be fined like fifty thousand dollars. Oh no, no, no! It was like she, the girl, showed like the, yeah, the line yeah. item. You know, I didn't really look into that because I was thinking in my head like, how did that even leak? Like, mm-hmm. like, like. Well, what did the contract say? Is I, I just be feeling like so I seen so it. much cap on the internet okay. from this stuff. So I don't know. I didn't really dive into it, but mm-hmm. I seriously doubt she has some like on somebody on our cast schedule because it's not like mm-hmm. we printed it out. Like right. it's a, it, mm-hmm. you got it in a docu sign uh-huh. email. Okay. So okay. it's like even when she like, how did she get that? Okay. You know. So, so that's not true. It's not true. Um, now they're not saying it, but you kind of feel like a little pressure, pressure. to go to the uh-huh. altar and stuff like that. But like they're not articulating that, and the staff was amazing. They yeah. didn't push me to do anything that I didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it was me and AD decision to go to the altar. We mm-hmm. actually got a dress because, you know, as you know, guys know, I was saying, you know, that I'm struggling with, mm-hmm. you know, the concept of like, hey, on May 12th, this is six weeks and we got to get married. Mm-hmm. I don't think we built enough of a foundation yet mm-hmm. to get married. And that's what I was articulating. They kept on having me saying, like, I'm afraid to cheat on you. That's That was an edit. I was saying that have we built the foundation enough we're, we're going to be faithful with each other forever. I right. don't want to cheat on you. And they cut that whole part out Ooh. and said, I don't want to cheat on you. Right. How y'all feel about that, y'all? Because that part really pissed me off. But then it, uh-uh. the baby part, the when they were in Costa Rica and he, like, they were talking about children. Like, I was like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. But how do y'all feel about that, though, that that was edited out? Cause they tried, they made it seem like he was like, oh, I don't want to cheat on you. That's what they made it seem like. It didn't, it didn't, let's rewind that. I was saying, you know, that I'm struggling with, mm-hmm. you know, the concept of like, hey, on May 12th, this is six weeks and we got to get married. Mm-hmm. I don't think we built enough of a foundation yet mm-hmm. to get married. And that's what I was articulating. They kept on having me saying like, I'm afraid to cheat on you. That's, that was an edit. I was saying that have we built the foundation enough we're, we're going to be faithful with each other forever. I right. don't want to cheat on you. And they cut that whole part out and said, I don't want to cheat on you. Right. So. Now, I know a lot of y'all are like, oh, he's full of shit. He's full of shit. But it would actually explain why AD went to the altar at all, girl. Like, it would it would explain why, all, why AD even thought to take this man serious. Because, like, when, when I saw that, I was like, and she's still here. Why? Why is she taking this man serious? So I don't know. Like, y'all want to jump on his, you know, down his throat. But I'm like, that would actually make sense why she even went through with the going to the altar at all. Because I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And that's what I be saying. Like, production and editing, they be messy as hell. That's why at the end of the day, this is just a reality TV show. We do not really know these people. We don't. We don't. But I don't know. Like, that... Yeah, I could see how the drama would bring good ratings. But y'all, I held that against that man like like I knew that man personally cuz I'm like you you going to tell that to her face? <laughs> y'all, I was so mad at this man. I was so mad. So, I don't know. That would kind of explain to me why AD stayed on the show. Honestly, it would explain why AD went to the altar because if that was what he actually said over what was edited, that would make more sense to me. Cause I'm like, why is she still on this show? It don't even make sense. Like, edit is out. It, it, it is crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. Yeah. And like, and like, like I said, it's a little yeah. spicy. And like I said, I receive it all. You know, people want to kill me for it. Like at the end of the day, like I do think that we was able to unpack a lot of things yeah. that I struggle with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. They I'm focused a lot on your parents too. And that conversation really did become a, uh, a backdrop mm, for yeah. this is why Clay mm-hmm. perhaps feels the way that he does. I saw a therapist breaking it down. Mm-hmm. And, my parents? Yeah, like your parents' conversation. Oh, my parents, yeah, yeah, yeah your yeah, parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and your dad, like things that, you know, your mom did not know. Yeah, And yeah. that main thing was that your dad, when he was cheating on your mom, would bring you, mm-hmm. you know, on some of those dates. And your mom wasn't even aware, aware yeah. of mm-hmm. that. That's a, wild. you know, yeah. How come you've never had that conversation with her before until this happened? And I know you guys are all working through things as a family yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's like kind of like, even though I disrespect it, but it's like bro code. Like, you know, I don't know. It's like, you know, my dad's my hero and like, I didn't want to, 
I didn't really process those things when I was a kid, when it was happening. And like, so when I was with AD and you're like faced with this time where you got to get married, like I just saw that it was a hurdle. It really wasn't me even trying to like snitch on my dad or anything like that. It was mm-hmm. just like, I got comfortable with the camera at that time. It was about like, you know, three and a half weeks of us filming and, you know, me having a conversation with AD, I was just articulating some of the blockage that I had in terms of like moving forward in our relationship. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, I know that had yeah. to make your mom furious. Like, yeah, why she would you subject that out. my child to yeah. yeah, yeah, What did yeah. she say to you? You know, she, that was the first time hearing it. Actually, so when she met AD, um, that scene, that was the first time ever hearing it. So uh, they, thank God, they didn't really get a lot of my mom, you know, conversation <laughs> like that. Because that was right. the first time she even heard of, she ever heard about that. And I thought I told her, but I, yeah. You know you didn't I, tell I your I, mama. I thought I told her. daddy was cheating on her. No, nah, I didn't tell her like that, but I definitely talked to Listen, 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 listen. This goes both ways. I've seen it both ways. He sees his dad as a hero. I don't know why. <laughs> Girl, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. But one thing that I noticed about kids, and I could probably relate to this as well, you tend to put the parent that has traumatized you the most on a pedestal. And I think uh, you tend to put the parent that has neglected you the most on a pedestal. You tend to overlook the parent that was there for you more than the parent that was not. And I think he uh, puts his dad on a pedestal because his dad was neglectful. I could tell this man was neglectful to him. So he he calls him a hero, but I don't think the man was even emotionally available to him, probably majority of his childhood, because... Just the way they interacted, it didn't seem like they have a a real, genuinely close emotional relationship. So um, I don't know. I could see why he has put his dad in his mind on a on a on a pedestal, but I don't know what he sees in his dad. But I don't I don't see it. (laughs) I don't see it. 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 So I I wish he would actually go into detail about why he sees his dad as a hero. Like what makes him a hero to him? Was it the cheating? Was it the many different women that he was pulling? Like, what was it about him? Is Does he have a good career? He has a good job. Does he see his dad as a hero because of his lifestyle? Like I look up to my mother, I could say that my mom is an inspiration to me because I love how she carries herself. I like how uh, she's very driven. She's She's inspirational to me in so many different ways. So I wonder what his reason behind his dad being a hero is to them, to him, because I, I don't see it. I don't see what that man could have really offered him. Cause even the words that he gave Clay on his wedding day, I was just like, I, I don't know. Like even the words he spoke before his wedding, I just like, ugh. To my little brother, and okay. you know, he, he be, cause I, I'm away from my family. Like I, right. I'm, a, I'm the only one down south, you okay. know, like okay. everybody else is in Jersey. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like I told me and my little brother, Nate, we talk all the time. Like he, Nate definitely know. So I thought Nate would have So like, you thought you was gonna message. put it on your brother and make your brother tell your mama. <laughs> I was, I ain't you the oldest, you're supposed to leave. You're right, you're right. Now yes. I learned, I, I, hey, hey, make mistakes, you know. <laughs> but do your parents still like AD too? It felt like they really did like her. Like they would have liked for you guys to get married. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom definitely got respect for AD. I don't think she liked the comment that AD made though at the reunion. She AD. didn't want to be your mom. Yeah, it's like, mm-hmm. it's like AD, what are you talking about, man? Mm-hmm. Like my mom was married for twenty three years. Like you wish, you know what I mean? Like, well, she said respectfully, but I, you know, yeah, she I, didn't want. She, she didn't did. want that situation. The way these men be thinking that just because a woman is married to a man for an extended period of time, like, but it, you wasted her. Your daddy wasted her time. So I don't know. No shade, but. What's the point of being married to somebody that long if it didn't last? I felt AD was real about that, but I don't think that I don't think she meant anything negative by it. I thought it was I think it was just an observation and I think she was just being honest. I I mean, I think we were I think AD only said what a lot of us were thinking like, "Oh, if you would have stayed in that, you probably would have ended up like his mom." I think we all were kind of thinking that because Clay, you went on a show for marriage and you're vomiting uh, all of these things about how you're not ready. You're not ready. You're confused on what being in a relationship marriage looks like because you saw saw your daddy cheat on your mom for 30 some years, 20 some years, however long it was. So I'm confused. Like, what did you expect for that woman to say? What did you think that she was thinking after seeing your mom and your dad interact? I think a lot of people thought that. Come on now. I don't think AD meant anything negative by it, though. 
to be hunting. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like she could have definitely worded that differently because my mom has only on camera has only spoke grace. She's she's had so much grace for AD. Mm -hmm. And you just opened up the conversation of like, well, women like, well, I don't want to be like that. But it's like mm -hmm. divorce happens, like breakups happen. You don't say you don't want to be like somebody. Like those stuff do happen. Like mm -hmm. relationships are tough. They're mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. My mom was married for 23, almost 24 years. Like that's an amazing accomplishment, whether you want to sneeze at it or not. You know, like of course the goal is to be married forever, but that's not everybody's story. So I thought AD has met my mom enough to know not to throw that in her face like that, but you know, that's I don't think she was throwing it in her face so much. Yeah, she like just said expressly what she did not want for herself. And I, and I understand that. I yeah. understand that. I, I, me personally, though, yeah. I didn't well, like that's that. that's your mom. Yeah, so you're, like you're going yeah, yeah, yeah. to ride for your mom. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and, and you know, like you said, one of the things that you want to make sure that you're able to talk about is your business. Has this help business? You yep. being on Love It. I don't like it. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair. I think... Um, I feel like his his uh his his anger about or his disapproval is misplaced. Again, I can see maybe he's trying to protect his mother, but like even if I was his mom, I would probably be like, I kind of understand why she said that, you know? Because if my son is saying, I don't know, I don't know, I've seen my my dad do X, Y, and Z. And then the girl that he's pursuing is coming to the conclusion after seeing the conversation I had with my ex-husband that his mom would probably think, well, I kind of understand where she's coming from. I wouldn't want her to be in my situation either if I was the mother, but being married to a man for 23, almost 24 years, it was all for nothing. You wasted, your daddy wasted your mother's time. I don't like it. I don't think marriage is an accomplishment just because someone stayed with a person for a certain period of time. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I think what maybe you accomplished together within this marriage, I could see that being like an accomplishment, but just staying with somebody, I don't see that as an accomplishment. I'm sorry. Ms. Blind, um, you have your Wave Sandy Water Rentals yeah. and you are an entrepreneur as well. And you also have a day job, right? Mm -hmm. um, so has this helped business? Have people been coming like, I'm going to go rent some? I actually haven't really been answering calls for the business just because like, you know, the first three weeks, I didn't feel like I had like, you know, positivity. So I kind of didn't really want to push my business at this time. And honestly, too, I, you know, it was really stressful going through everything I went through. Mm -hmm. So I plan on like upping up the business in April, but we do got new equipment. We got four new boats. We got, uh, we're getting a jet car soon. We got uh, five jet skis. So we definitely ready to have a lit summer, but I, I just wanted to kind of pause it. Uh, I got a new job. Um, so I wanted to focus on that while I was going through everything. It's been real stressful. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people call in my business line and then, you know, it's a, little, a lot of trolls. Right. So, you know, I didn't want to like really push the business too much during this time period. I understand yeah. that. Let it calm down a little. Yeah. Down yeah. A little Does bit, it yeah. affect you mentally? Because like I said, people were coming at you. They yeah. were like, AD was amazing. You know, you really dropped the ball. How could you do that to her? You left her at the altar. Did you anticipate all of this backlash? When I didn't. Yeah, I didn't at all. Like I was getting like death threats. Uh, my number Whoa. got leaked. Yeah. I got people sending me text messages. So it's always like, hey, get off social media. But yeah. it was getting away really from social bad. media. Mm -hmm. It was giving my business reviews. And it's mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm a black owned business. Like I've had success in this stuff. Like why are y'all trying to tear me down off of something y'all don't even know? Like yeah. they didn't even, to me personally, I don't even think I got a favorable edit. Like I felt like mm -hmm. they cut me up so crazy mm -hmm. where people don't even, didn't even really get to know who mm -hmm. I really was. Mm -hmm. So like for y'all to like leave, give me one stars on my business and leave oh, that yeah, review. Yeah, I don't agree with that. And I'm tired of social media doing that. I've seen people do it on TikTok over an opinion that they didn't agree with. I don't I don't agree with that, y'all. If it if it's if it's if it if it's something like that pertains to like racism or something like that, okay. But people trolling people when it comes to differences in opinions, doxing people because of differences in opinions, um, scamming people's businesses i'm 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 not here for that and i will never be a part of the 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 crowd online that does that type of stuff because it's it's just come on now i just i don't feel like that's fair i don't feel like that's right you have every right not to like this man but to go out of your way to do all of that that's a little obsessive that's a little obsessive because that has nothing to do with it. They got yeah. nothing to do with nothing. Like yeah. people who didn't even rent my jet skis or my people boat outside. Are crazy. It, it was crazy. And then my number got leaked. Yeah. And then people were sending me like, you know, crazy messages. Yeah. My voicemail, I got like death threats. So it comes I, to the territory. It comes to territory. But yeah. 100%, I, I did not expect that. Mm -hmm. I thought that like, you know, me opening up and being vulnerable mm -hmm. was like a, a safe space. And I thought mm -hmm. that for the black community, something mm -hmm. that y'all needed to hear, like a black man being, you know, transparent about yeah. like some of the things we struggle with. I didn't know that me being transparent about my stuff was going to mm -hmm. give me such a, a target where people are like, you know, F you, F you, you know, yeah. so. It's, it's both. Yeah. I yeah. think it definitely did open up a lot of doors for conversation in the community, mm -hmm. but it also opened you up to, because you're being vulnerable to yeah. people coming at you. I do have a question and this don't, this don't have nothing to do with Clay at all. I just want to ask this question is general. 
are black women in a position to hear black men out who are trying to do the work, like really do the work? Do you do you even have space for them at all? And if you do have space for them, what does that even look like? Because I have to ask myself this question. Do I have space for a black man to come to me and say, I, I messed up. I'm in therapy. I'm working on myself. Do you have space for that? You want to, I, I have to be real with you. The number one thing that I struggle with when it comes to this is believing it. Honestly, like it's me believing that they're serious. Like honestly, and the reason is because how do I not know? Like I, and yes, I've said this, I will say it again. How do I, my trauma has me believe that men lie a lot. They lie 99% of the time. And I just think that this is just another gameplay, you know, like, so that's what I want to know. I want to hear from y'all. Like, do you hold space for them when it comes to this, like them healing, working on themselves and doing better? Do, do black women even care now? Or, or are you at a place where you don't care? I want to know. I want to hear from you. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the birthday. Thank you for the birthday shout out. But <laughs> I just, I do, I want to, I want to hear from y'all on that because I don't know, like, what if they're, what if they are genuine? I'm at a point where I can't tell. I, I just think it's another gameplay, you know, but I don't think it was fair that his business was targeted. Like, come on now. Cause I wouldn't want somebody doing that to me over a clip that they saw of me or an opinion that I gave. That's just me being fair. Right. But I just, I think I just want to see men do better. I don't think I want to hear them how they, I don't want to hear them talk about it. The only thing that I trust is what I see. And it, and then with me seeing them do better, I need to see that consistently. And to be honest, what does the consistency look like? It could take years for me to believe it. Like, honestly, like it would take years for me to believe that this man has changed by me consistently seeing him show up consistently. I don't think I have space to hear a man say, I'm I'm going to therapy, I'm doing better. Like I, I actually need to see you do it because I don't trust what men say. I'm just being honest. I don't. I don't trust a thing that come out of their mouth. I don't. I have to see you get in your car. I have to see you go go to the therapist's office, take a picture with your therapist. Maybe if like I'm just being honest, y'all, because I don't know. Like, I think men could easily manipulate with this, like this whole therapy thing, this whole healing thing, and just try to get women caught up. I don't want to hear you talk about it. I want to see you do it. I just want to see you do it. That's it. So, yeah, I need the receipts. <laughs> Black women have been put through so much. Like, if you are not showing us, I don't, I don't care to hear it. <laughs> Yeah, I think we I I think we over. That's why I wanted to ask y'all cuz I'm like, damn, am I am I still like unhealed and just so broken to the point where I can't even hold space? But I think it's just because I've been played so many times with the, "Oh, I'm changed. I'm going to do better." to where I'm just not buying that. Like I really need to see you in action. I do. So thank y'all for um for confirming that that it's just not just me cuz I'm just like, eh. They're sitting at home in their bathrobes, a dirty bathrobe, <laughs> and unwashed bed sheets. Yeah. Candace is like, trust me, I know. Okay. Yeah. I understand. I feel your pain. But yeah. that is, it comes with the territory. And whatever. If you continue in this space, yeah. that's not going to stop. Yeah, so stop. Just sticking yeah. up the skin. Yeah, shout out to Jalen for holding me back. You know, because I definitely, <laughs> I tried to fire off. Ready to come at people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because there was also yeah. the, oh, well, he just wanted to be on TV. But this is your first time doing TV. And then there was Trevor, who at the reunion had his whole issue yeah. that was wild. He was like, he took the longest pause I've ever seen. That was awkward. In, that was in awkward. answering a question. And Trevor's my boy too, man. Not too much on Trevor, man. Like, <laughs> the funny thing is, man, I really feel like the internet need to chill on Trevor. Like that's Netflix trying to make Trevor the golden boy. He never, he never yeah. wanted that. Yeah. He, we was in the pause. We was cutting up everything that I did in the pause saying, I want to, you know, I'm, my ner I'm nervous about if I fall in love with a girl and I'm not attracted to her. That was a big fear. Trevor said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Trevor was on me. We said that on the pause mm -hmm. and the cameras. So that's Netflix trying to make Trevor look but like he did have that. Honestly, y'all, I feel like Trevor is, he, he, he disappointed me the most. Everybody going after Clay, but I'm just like, I don't think Clay, based off of his edits, 
was not that bad. The way Trevor, they had portrayed him to be on the show, I was so disappointed. I was just, I was more mad about Trevor than 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 probably anybody else on the show. Cause I was just like, really? I was so mad at Trevor. I was like, <sighs> that girl that he was like, I'm leaving now to go do this. I'll be back. Like, but I'm gonna say this too though. Like, I get it. I think Trevor said some crazy thing on text. So I'm not trying to defend everything Trevor did. Yes, but I'm just that. defending from the perspective of, Love is Blind told us that we are officially cast members a week before we flew out there, or like a week and a half before we flew out there. We started the interview in October 2022. Uh, March 2023 is when they told us that we're officially cast members. So a lot happens in between. Yeah, yeah like, mm -hmm. what you want me to do? Pause my life? Like, not right. talk to anybody yeah. during this time period? It's like, yeah. And then they, then when they talk to you, they say, hey, you're not officially a cast member. So, you know, we yeah, they, some people they kept you don't even you. see yeah, when you don't you're even on there. Because there's couples that we don't even yeah, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. have exactly. a chance to yeah. see. And there was a lot of women on the other side that had men that... They I mean, I get what he's saying. Like, I get what he's saying, but no, <laughs> no, no, no. I read those text messages and Trevor was being emotionally manipulative. And I didn't, I didn't like that. And it kind of showed that he was, um, he, it probably, he could have been even emotionally abusive in this relationship. It was just, too, no, you telling a woman, I'm going to marry you when I get out of here. Like, it was just too much. No, 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 no. Sorry. No, no. They went uh -huh. to right after they finished. It's just that they didn't have a storyline for you to see that. So, right. mm -hmm. you know, I just feel like the men, we kind of are like, we're like kicking backs in this whole experiment. I always see like the men <laughs> just getting slandered. And I don't like the way they do that, honestly. You know? <laughs> no, I'll say yeah. Chelsea got slandered a lot. Chelsea got slandered. Yeah, don't do that. Chelsea yeah. might have got slandered. You know what's crazy too? Chelsea. I was so shocked watching that because Chelsea was always cool as hell. Like I always thought Chelsea, Chelsea was like one of them girls that could hang out with the guys. So like yeah. seeing her in Insec that light. She had a lot of insecurities. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like it was very interesting. And she did not take accountability. Like if she, she did, did not, something, yeah. she wouldn't be like, well, I was yeah. wrong for that. Yeah. It was always like, yeah, but you, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. Chelsea must be cool as hell in real life because everyone keeps saying the same thing about her. Everyone keeps saying she's so cool. She did it all. I was like. They had edited her up so bad that she was annoying as hell to me. So I don't know. I've heard that several times. Like a lot of people keep saying Chelsea is really nice. She's really cool. She's really down to earth. Oh, shout out to Chelsea too, man. What Go about Chelsea, your exes man. when they saw you on the show? Did any of them hit you up? Like, oh, of course. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they definitely was. Uh, <laughs> some of them actually told me that they it was healing for them, you know, because like, mm -hmm. you know, so different things that, you know, they didn't see before. Like, you know, I, I never really articulated the struggle that I had with, you know, with my dad and like mm -hmm. how I looked at marriage and like the blockage that I had. So, you know, I'm one of my exes that, you know, I dated for, you know, two years hit me up to say, you know, it was actually, thank you for giving me the heads up because it would have been crazy if I would have watched it and see your face yeah. on the screen and not mm -hmm. known. So she said, yeah. thank you for the heads up. And, and I was like, you know, talking about it. She said it actually provided a lot of healing for her. So I was happy to hear that. But it was definitely. That's not what the ex said online. I don't know if this is the same ex, but that's not what she said online. Let me see if I can find that that video. I think a couple of exes that came out the woodwork that, you know, not even an ex, like, you know, somebody that you just messed with back in the day and they just like, oh, wow, that's my ex-boyfriend. Like, girl, we can that once, girl, don't do that. So is that what he's talking about? Is that, I, I guess that's what he's talking about. Because there was a girl that came out and I was just like, okay, somebody lying. Somebody lying. He's saying it's not true. I wonder if we gonna get something out of this because he just basically debunked that. Like, was she a situationship, a sneaky link? Like, what was that about? So who's really the ex? I Now I'm confused because I saw what the ex-girlfriend looked like. She came out and she spoke out on social media. And that's when I realized, like, oh, Clay is not a colorist because I was like, they damn near the same complexion. So was that his ex? Was this a different ex? Was this an ex sneaky link situation shit? Because she was just like, we did before he came on the show. Like they, I guess they had like a little thing going on, but she made it seem like it was a relate, a full blown relationship. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me review that one more time though. Hold on. But it was definitely a couple of exes that came out the woodwork that, you know, not even an ex, like, you know, somebody that you just messed with back in the day and they just like, oh, I, that's my ex-boyfriend. Like, girl, we can get this up once, girl, yeah. don't do that. I'll let you the club, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hang it on. Hang her on. Now, um, what made you decide to start going to therapy? Uh, for me, I just felt like I always heard therapy. I always heard about it, but like, you know, just like, you know, man, I don't need that. You know, like, I just never thought that it was something big for me to do. And, uh, you know, a big part was uh, me doing the show. Like, I felt like the producers were therapists in themselves. I think they have like a they psychiatrist, are. like degree and something like that. Some so, do. Yeah, yeah, some do. So my therapy, my, uh, producer was like watching my every move and just like asking me questions that like, you know, I'm like, damn, like, why am I doing that? Mm -hmm. Like, I remember the first kind of two days in the pod, he's like, Clay, it's like, looks like you're having like a business interview. Like, you need to open up. <laughs> they did say that. Yeah. It looked like he's on a job interview. Yeah, job. But I'm like corporate. Like, I've been in corporate for like Mad Long. So like, I, I like 
yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, that's how it is. But like he kind of was like telling me, like, hey, I need you to do this better and stuff like that. So it, it and he's playing out. with your feet a lot. What was that? Well, about? <laughs> that's that's yeah. I'm, I'm quirky, man. I'm quirky. I think <laughs> I'm quirky. Like, so. Stop playing, playing with these feet. feet. I was comfortable in there, like <laughs> that you were very comfortable. And, like, that is I'm what like, they don't know, like, why they gotta show that? Like they could have they could have panned the AD during that time period. But listen, like I said, with her feet though. They could I'm just saying they could hook they could hook the brother up and not 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 they had they had a lot of scenes where I was talking and they had they had AD listening to me. They should have just panned out, but it is what it is. That turned into a thing, like why? Yes, and, a, and, then, and I think I sniffed it one time too. Like, damn, I was like, yeah. I didn't know I did that. So it's crazy. Yeah, see, My that's bad. something I, you learned about yourself. Yeah. I didn't even know I did that. So, yeah. you know, Do the, so, what are some things in therapy that you've learned about yourself? Uh, so giving myself grace is something I learned about myself. Also, too, my therapist has been telling me that liberation isn't easy. Mm. I think that for black men, we do need to have that safe space, and I want to advocate for mental health uh, advocacy and honestly just pushing. The Listen, I I gotta be real with the men that are tuning in. Okay. <laughs> When you put a woman through so much, and I don't know if you, I don't know, it's like exes, they always want to come back and try to make it seem like they change and stuff like that. But when you put a woman through so much, and then, I don't know, you, it finally clicks, like you want to change, and you're telling her all of these things, you know what it sounds like to us? Bullshit. Like, it just sounds like bullshit. I haven't heard a thing this man said outside, well, as soon as he say, Therapy, anything, I don't hear anything. I, I think it's nonsense. <laughs> like, I think it's just straight up bullshit. I just, I, I don't know, y'all. I just, every time, like, men try to come back and make it seem like they just changed version of themselves. Like, it just, I, I just hear nonsense. I, I don't know. It's like vomit. Like, it's like, what did you say? <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I think women, when we've gone through enough with people, it's like, eh. I'm cool. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like, eh, I can do without this narrative that you know we do as men need to have conversations we do need to talk about marriage and you know just have a good understanding of it because you know i said at the reunion like for guys whenever we get married you know you really only hear like happy wife happy life you don't really hear about what makes a, a guy happy in relationships <laughs> or what men can do to be happy in relationships so we could you know just expressing that having a safe space and you know i just want to push it for men because we're always told to be tough and have a tough interior and you know sometimes we do need to be oh vulnerable God. and let that stuff out so yeah yeah, it's interesting because you say that, but then if you cry, people have an issue with that. They'd be like, what is he crying for? Yeah, like, yeah. what is, you You're know, you just win. can't win. You can't general win. public, no, <laughs> you, you, you got to be good with where you are and what you have. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Now, Jimmy also said he would be open to dating AD. Would that bother you? No, I mean, AD single. Like, I'm not a yeah. guy that. But you was cooling with people. Like, you know, those are guys that, it, it is a competition in a way, yeah. I guess. But these are also people that, like, y'all were sharing things with each other. If I AD dates Jimmy, like, what are we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> so, like. Go ahead. Like, you know what I mean? What am I supposed to do? Like, Jimmy, don't do that. You're my friend. Like, uh, go ahead, bro. Like, I'm not what about, about bro code? You said bro code earlier. I got bro code. I'm, okay. not, gonna, I'm not gonna put that so on every man. You know what I'm saying? And I broke bro code too with my dad. So I gotta like, you know, I gotta okay. take that on the chin, okay. you know. So you know. are you still friends with some of those guys? Like y'all still Yeah, I'm cool with talk? Jimmy, I'm cool with Johnny, Ken. I think the biggest red flag about Clay is um he feels like he broke bro code with his dad, but what did you do to your mom? I never hear that side of the dad cheating, the dad cheating, the dad. It's always dad, 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 dad. But what about your mother? What about her pain? What about her hurt? Like, I just don't hear him talk about that. He's still concerned about bro code, bro. What about your mother and, and what she went through finding that information out? That, I think that's the biggest red flag when it comes to uh, Clay, because... He keeps talking about his damn daddy, and I'm tired of hearing about his damn daddy because his daddy ain't shit. But what about your mother, though? Like, you're concerned about breaking co bro code with your dad, but what about what that did to your mother? That's the, y'all, that's, that's, that, that's what I don't get. I don't like it. I don't like, do you care about how this affected your mom at all? Cause I don't hear him talking about that. I'll, that's all I hear, dad, 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 dad. But what about how it affected your mother? I don't like that. It's almost like he just sweeping past his mother's pain like it's nothing. I don't respect that. Jeremy, I was just you know Jeremy Ross Jeskies and stuff like that. So I rolled with Jeremy. But then, but then, but then wanted to get mad at AD for pointing out that she didn't want to be like his mom. What woman would? So I don't. I'm. I I, I wish Angela would have asked
some more in-depth questions would have just expanded a little bit more with with some of his responses because I have so I'm I'm left with so much to ask. Uh, you know, Ken is cool. Me and Johnny are probably like the coolest. Okay. Uh, we talk a lot and I'm really cool with Jimmy as well. And Trev, I'm cool with Trev as well. Have you ever turned your locations on in a relationship? Nah, never, never. But uh, maybe I should, right? More trust. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Just be careful. <laughs> Just make with, sure you... with your wife. With my Not, wife, yes, yeah. Or with the woman you are sure is going to be your wife. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, listen, I do appreciate you for coming up and actually clearing up a lot of things. You know, we did see a lot, like you said, on TV, but a lot of it does get edited. Mm -hmm. That, he didn't clear up nothing. <laughs> what, y'all, did he clear up some things to you? The only thing he may have cleared up is the edit about, oh, I, I don't want to cheat on you. But it was uh, it was more in depth, too. Like, there was more details that were missing from that clip, which would explain why AD stayed on the show, in my opinion. But Al, Al, what did he clear up? He didn't clear up nothing. He didn't clear up much. You know, so I think the main thing, the main takeaway is that you are working on yourself and you do look forward to being married one day. Yeah, I do, 100%. Do you think AD just wasn't the right person or you think it's not the right time? I, I just, I said it, I didn't think it was the right time. I just mm -hmm. felt like, cause I said I wanted to date AD after, but you know, AD was very focused on being a wife yeah. at that time. Yeah. Right. Know, so. Plus you can't say no at the altar and then be like, but let's keep dating. Yeah, no, that's that, a tough. That's tough. That's I have tough. a best friend who they called off their wedding and I thought they were gonna break up and they stayed together and got married like years later. Yeah. You never so know, it, you might spin the block. It get, right, it can happen. I thought it was pretty, I mean, hey, I, I get it. I didn't understand the magnitude of, you know, the wedding altar saying no, but I'm just like yo, ad like we actually so we had a good two weeks you know prior to that i feel like you've seen like episode like 10 and 11 we really didn't have too much drama like mm -hmm. we did in the beginning and and honestly like two weeks is like two months so mm -hmm. we had like a really good ride to the end so i felt like the momentum that we had although i said no like all the times before that we had a great relationship so i didn't think it was like you know crazy to say hey like let's be in a relationship but mm -hmm. also too I understand her. You know, you, I said no at the altar. It's like rejection. So the way how she goes about it, I can't judge. Right. And I give her grace in that. And I, like I said, I support AD and everything she does. So. Do you guys still speak now? Yeah, we still cool. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Will you still like ask her out? Let's go do something. Let's go eat. Or that's all. I kind of let AD lead with that. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, you know. You know, a couple of times at the reunion, like a couple of times, like, you know, me, like, I'm not going to be chasing <laughs> too much. Like, you know, like if, 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 if I <laughs> ask you to do something and you like, you know, don't really respond to it, I'm not going to keep on asking, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. Mm -hmm. But do you, I don't know, y'all. I, I don't know about that, y'all. I think if AD is really the love of his life, nothing would stop him from going after her. What y'all think? Cause he seemed he he seemed like he a little hurt that she's rejecting him now, and the ball is in her court, and he doesn't he don't like that. But I'm like, you kind of did that to yourself. You did that to yourself, and you have to own that as a man because she was right there. She was right there. She was ready. You weren't ready, and now. You feel like you too you too good to go after her when she's the love of your life? Like I call why are men it's an ego thing. Like it's no, I don't think he's lying. I think it's an ego thing. I think it's like an ego, like, oh, I'm too good to go after the woman that I I claim is the love of my life because she is kind of like not wanting to get back trapped in that space with you because. She was she was thinking that y'all were gonna get married, so I completely understand. But I'm just like I don't I don't know. But listen, he don't want to chase her. And ladies, when a man is you know saying, "Oh, you're the love of my life," da da da, but he not putting no no action behind it, it may just be a blessing in disguise. It may just be your protection at the end of the day. So I wouldn't even take it personal. But I'm just saying, like, if I was in his shoes. And there was something that I really wanted. Nothing would stop me from going after that because that's what I want. So I would have to assert myself in that way. So I don't know, but he acting real. I don't, I, he acted feminine to me, y'all. He acted feminine. And did y'all see, if, if I'm the only one that's been seeing this, but have y'all been seeing how people on TikTok think that Kenneth has a crush on Clay? Have y'all been seeing that? They're saying that Kenneth was showing signs that he was more into Clay than Britney. And I didn't pick that up. I did not pick that up when I was watching the show, but I look back and I'm like, 
When he broke up with Britney, he said on the reunion, oh, Clay was the first person I called. Did y'all see that? Am I the only one seeing that? I know I'm not the only one seeing that on TikTok. Oh, well, let me let me let me bring it up. I know I'm not the only one seeing that on TikTok. You know, what is your dad doing any um, therapy or anything like that, or just you? Like, or because like you said, the family is healing from certain things that you guys learned about each other. Is the whole family working on things, or are you alone just going to therapy? No, no, my dad's working on it as well. It's oh, actually good. really good. My dad actually had a meeting with the family and apologized to my oh, mom. He apologized wonderful. to the kids, and wow. so I just feel like the world needs to just back off off my dad a little bit because, mm -hmm. like, yeah. he had the healing. He apologized, and he's yeah. putting in the work. Like, he we have a group chat where he talks to us every single day. Mm -hmm. He wants to understand how he could be a better father, and I mean that's accountability right yeah, there. Right. Like, yeah, you take you make you tell you have an L, but like it's how yeah. you respond. Yeah. And my dad has responded tremendously, so. Yeah. No, shout out to him. And that's yeah. been for a lot of people it's to learn from. For a family. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Because yeah. he probably had no idea. Like, you know, I, I mean, people do things yeah. and they're not mm -hmm. even thinking about like the consequences. Of yeah, how it affects effect. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and to hear that from you. All right. Well, good. We yeah. appreciate it. We're going to be following you, following your business. Awesome. Would you do reality TV again? Right now, I'm going to say no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't want to say, you know. I don't you, never know. you never, you never know. know. You never know. What right are some? Uh, you know what else I wanted to ask you? What are some things you feel like could have made this experience better? You know, they're always talking about, well, this season they're doing this differently because the cast said this. But like, if you could give feedback and say this would have been helpful for me while I was on the show, what are some things that you think would be helpful? Hmm. I think it would just been helpful if I did my homework before mm -hmm. going on the show. I, I'm gonna just put it on me. I wish I like watched it mm -hmm. before going on. Like watching some of the other cast members. Like I'm not saying that they did anything fake, but you could just tell that they knew like what to expect. How to and, finesse like, things. How to finesse things a little bit. Where I'm just like, yeah, hey, I need to see your boobs and titties and stuff like that. You know, so like I, you know, it's like, hey, chill out, Clay. That ain't the point of the show. So I would kind of wish that uh, I watched it, but uh, I think the producer did a great job of outlining everything. So okay, yeah. so you you were fine with the way everything was. I was fine. Like okay, I said, yeah. it was on you. All right, mm -hmm. there we go, Clay, with the accountability. accountability. Yeah. Therapy is working. It's working right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, well, thank you. Mm -mm. He need to, he need a season two for for us to see if therapy is working for me because I I can't go off of what a man say. I gotta go off of what he out here doing. Okay, so let me switch gears here. This is where it said. Did you, have y'all been seeing this? The end. Watch till the end. Watch till the end. Watch till the end. Okay, did y'all catch it? Did y'all catch it? He said, yo, y'all turning me on. I don't know. I listen, listen, listen. And then um on the reunion, on the re on the reunion, but he did it a few times. He did it, he did it like twice. But on the reunion, too, uh, he was sitting on the couch and like they were talking about Britney and Kenneth and everything like that and their breakup and everything. And Kenneth was like, Oh, yeah, like when I broke up with Britney, the first person I called was Clay. I think he may have a little crush on Clay. I've been seeing the girls talk about it on TikTok. I, I can't find the other videos. Maybe it's here. When you guys got back from the DR, uh -huh. you can almost hear people screaming for you to get off of your phone. Like, we're so fan at home. So I don't want to say that my fiance took over. Um, so I want to say that what I will say is, um, we all know I'm the principal, right? Oh my God, the principal line again. The ground, the Ask the real question. Were you? <laughs> Hold on, wait. Were you talking to boys? I think two things can be true at the same time. That's what I think. Because listen, I talked to a few teachers and I don't know any principals, but just even talking to teachers, they're like, being a principal is a big job. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot. So I think two things can be true at the same time. He may have been using his job to like put a wedge between them further, but I think that also his job was very demanding as well. So I don't know. Two things can be 
true at the same time. But yeah, they they are out here on TikTok trying to make it seem like Kenneth may have had a thing for Clay on the show. And I'm like, I could actually see that. I could because there were just times where Kenneth would be in the middle a lot when it came to uh Clay and A D. And I did. I it was kind of I don't know, it's kind of awkward. It was kind of like standoffish, like awkward, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. But uh, honestly, Clay didn't really clear up anything for me. Uh, Angela Yee, I really felt like she dropped the ball in her interview because I just felt like some of his responses could have been elaborated more on as far as like how what was his expectations for AD? What were her financial responsibilities going to look like for him as a provider? And I explained, you know, for me, providing is still 70, 30. It's still 80, 20 for me. It's not providing, it's not a man funding your whole lifestyle. There are providers out here who will do that, but I don't think that that's the only category for provider men. I think it could be 80, 20. I always feel like a provider is a man that's taking on more financially, also helping around the house, taking on more. I just feel like a man who is truly a provider is going to take on more period. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the, the dynamic look like, what it looks like. I feel like it's always going to be him in every area within the home. He's going to be doing more. And if he's not doing more, I don't feel like he's a provider. So that's my opinion on what a provider is. I feel like that's more realistic. But y'all let me know. Uh, did you like the breakdown of that woman's marriage when she talked about the dynamic with the finances? Let me know down below. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. Again, I don't feel like any of my questions were really answered. Also, uh, I don't know if you want me to react to this interview that AD did. Because girl, the girls in the the girls in the comment section are saying things like uh we should that this video should have been titled Let me show you cuz so y'all know I'm not crazy cuz I'm like, "Dang, what was said in this interview?" I thought I had it pulled up. Because she titled it Kimmy Crawford. She she titled it Love is Blind, Not Delusional with AD. And, and I was reading some of the comments and people were saying, no, this should have been still delusional with AD. So I don't know what was said. I don't know. Let me know if you want me to react to this interview as well. This interview is longer, though. But I was just reading some of the comments and they're saying that, no, she's still delusional. So I don't know what was said in here. Has anybody uh, has anybody else watched it? Y'all have any takes on it? React to it. OK, I'll probably do that. I'll do that tomorrow, probably during the day while y'all at work to keep y'all, y'all know, busy. <laughs> I love to keep y'all busy, um, especially while you at work. Let's watch it together. Okay. I haven't watched it. I was just reading some of the comments and I was like, dang, I don't know what was said. I, I have not watched it. So I guess we'll just wait. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I have for this video. Give the video a thumbs up if you want me to react to this interview with AD and uh, Cammie. And I will come back tomorrow and do that. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's day.